a decision needed to be made. IDF medical teams treated the injured, lifted them into ambulances, and brought them to the trauma centers in the north of Israel. This was, this was only the beginning. The word spread rapidly and quietly among the Syrians, and it became known that if help is needed, it can be found. Just go to the fence. To date, we have treated more than 3,000 Syrians injured in the country's civil war. <laughs> Teams of young IDF medics patrol the fence night after night, shaking in the cold, working in the dark, pulling people to safety. The Syrian risks their lives coming to us, so they do it under the cover of the darkness. We are proud of what we do. But I worry that someday, someone will try to harm our crews while they are saving lives of those who have been taught for generations that we are their enemy. We are not their enemy. We are their ambulance drivers, their surgeons, their medics, their nurses, their pharmacists, their social workers. I had the complex job of managing this operation. Who goes to which hospital? Who needs to be transferred by helicopter? Who can we help? And who is beyond our help? Even with two decades' worth of professional training and experience on my side, the choices are complicated. Like a very small blanket being pulled in many directions, quite often you have to be creative, flexible, and willing to improvise. By now, we've gotten used to coordinating between the military and civilian hospitals. We've gotten used to finding clean clothes and cutting off the tags, so when they go back home, nobody will ever know they've been to Israel. We've gotten used to the constant flow of patients to our nation's door, but there are some things you can never get used to. One night, 26 people came to the fence. Among them, there were two brothers, aged five and seven, accompanied by the grandmother. They were at the hospital in Syria, tre treated for injuries that they had already sustained from an earlier airstrike when the hospital was bombed. The boys suffered severe burns. Over 60% of the tiny bodies were burned. I climbed into a helicopter with the boys and the grandmother. Mid-flight, the youngest crashed. I worked on him, regaining his heartbeat and trying to calm the grandmother. Before landing at the hospital, I showed her the lights of Tel Aviv. She cried. <laughs> it said that surgeons have no hearts, but I have to tell you that working on these cases is really heartbreaking. The toughest cases I will not talk about. Nobody thought the stream of Syrian patients would continue, but they keep coming, even tonight. And these days, more, of the, more and more of these patients are women and children. I see this as a sign of trust. We do what we do freely and with all our hearts because it's within our ability. As an Israeli, I feel it's our duty to help whomever we can. We help because it's quite simply the right thing to do. Because we cannot turn our backs on people who are in need. Because at the end of the day, we all want health and security, peace and quiet on every side of that fence. Thank you very much. <laughs>